welcome to Talking Sports with the Youngster and the Old Man. And now, here are your hosts, Troy Robert and Kevin Cunningham. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful day. I am Troy Robert, joined by the Youngster, Kevin Cunningham, a.k.a. Kid Cunny on Twitter. Youngster, this is a special show. College football edition, talking sports with the youngster and old man. Now, you know that you and I have one hour. We have only one hour, youngster, so keep that in mind because we could turn this college football preview into about a four-hour show. So, you may have to keep me in line. I may have to keep you in line. But before we get started, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I, I know we're on time constraints here, and we're going to talk uh, about the college football playoff as a whole, but also kind of what led into it. Um, that's my starting point. I have a starting point for the show, Troy. I'm doing just fine, ready to get this hour rolling. Yeah, we got a, we got a lot to go. No small talk today. No, no uh, pats on the backs and, hey, fluffy fluff this and fluffy fluff that and, oh, my life sucks kind of stuff. <laughs> now we're going to get right into it. Uh, biggest thing, Kevin, you know, normally we go through the top ten, went through the playoff. So I'm going to turn it over to you. You can go through the playoff seedings, rankings, all that good stuff, and then we'll get into the games. How does that sound? Sounds like a plan. So, yeah, like I said, I, I've got a starting point with this show. Um, we did not talk before the show about, you know, necessarily what exactly uh, we would talk about topic to topic to topic. We're keeping it college football playoff basically related here. And so we wanted to do a, an hour show just dedicated to this, and this is it. And the college football playoff is finally set. And Clemson is number one, Oklahoma is number two, Georgia is number three. Those three make perfect sense to me. Clemson won the ACC, I get it. Oklahoma won the Big 12, I get it. Georgia won the SEC, I get it. This is where I figured it would, it would come down to, is the coin flip that I talked about a week ago. You've got Alabama, you've got one loss. Their most recent game was a loss, a double-digit loss to Auburn, who now has lost three games. So it's like, okay, do we take Alabama as a one-loss team? who's Alabama, and we know what Alabama is just based on history, which, again, that's <laughs> we could get into that as well here. But my opening question to you, Troy, is what was your thought and what is your thought in general about Alabama making it as the fourth team, a second SEC team, as opposed to the Big Ten winner in Ohio State, who has two losses instead of Alabama's one. Alabama's lost twice – or, sorry, Ohio State's lost twice – Ohio State had a 30-point loss to Iowa, who is currently unranked. I believe they finished the year 7-5, and five, if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to double-check. But that, that's not seen as a wonderful loss, <laughs> losing by 35. Um, but so you had this coin flip that I figured would take place because you knew the winner of the ACC was going in. You knew the winner of the SEC was going in. As long as Oklahoma took care of business, which everyone thought they would, they'd be in. Those three, boom, they're in. Alabama, Ohio State. That was where things could get tricky. If Wisconsin won, uh, to me, they, they were in. 13-0, Big Ten winner, they're in. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. But your thought, Troy, on Alabama beating out Ohio State for that final spot? The committee wanted them in the playoff. That's my final thought. That's why they fell to five. Because they knew they couldn't put them at four after their loss. They couldn't keep them in the playoff because they lost. And they had to keep consistent with what they've done all year, and so they dropped them to five. But they very well could have dropped them down to six. They could have dropped them wherever they wanted to. But at the end of the day, the committee wanted Alabama in the playoff. Right now, they're probably sitting around the table high-fiving each other because Alabama's in the playoff. And, yes, I'm throwing that out there. I think there is some bias in this. Is Alabama one of the best four teams in the country? I could, I could probably sit and argue that thought with many people right now and say I'm not so sure. Look at their schedule. It wasn't the best schedule in the world. 
wasn't the toughest. If I believe what I heard, I think it was a week ago, they were 63rd, and I think Wisconsin was 62 or something like that. They were right there. That's not good. Yeah. 63rd, and there's, what, 140 Division One football schools? You're middle oh, of the pack. <laughs> so yeah. I, I don't think that when you look at it from that standpoint – that Alabama is one of the top four teams. They didn't play anyone. And I know people say, well, it's Alabama. They took care of it. Yeah, they did. And the thing is, for those that listen to the show, you know that I don't sit here, and I never thought Wisconsin was a top four team. I've never said that as a person who hosts the show. I said that as a fan that hey this is great i can't wait i'm gonna cheer i cheered a lot but as a realistic person nah they weren't a playoff team but it is what it is kevin at the end of the day the playoff committee wanted alabama in the weekend rolled out exactly how they wanted it to no hard decisions other than that one you know everybody won except wisconsin I think they already knew, and they already had scenarios played out. They're smart people. They already knew if it came down to that, Wisconsin losing, Ohio State winning. I think a lot of it had to do with how Ohio State won. And it was a tough battle. It it really was. But at the end of the day, I don't want to say they struggled with Wisconsin. To be honest, Kevin, as I'm watching that game, I really thought Ohio State was in control of that game for most of it. As a fan, I'm watching it going, come on, this is not going to end well. And then, you know, at the end of the game, we're not going to talk about it. This college football playoff, maybe next week on the Big Ten we can talk about it. But Wisconsin not going for it on the fourth down, punting it back. I know the defense made a great stand, but now you're you're putting the ball in Hornybrook's hands. To go it on the field with less time and no timeouts, that is, to me, ridiculous. So, but to answer your question, I, as soon as Ohio State won that game, I knew it was going to be an up-road, up-road battle for Ohio State to surpass Alabama because the committee wanted them in. That's my thought. I don't necessarily think it came down to biases, and I heard this thing about brands and people talking about, well, it's Alabama. Of course they wanted Alabama in over Ohio State, and to me – I. Uh, just by brand, I, I don't think Alabama is this massive brand that Ohio State isn't. I, I don't think that at all. Um, I don't think it came down to that. I think you can make the argument if it was Bama TCU <laughs> or Al- Ohio State TCU, and you take Bama or Ohio State or a Notre Dame, for example, and TCU, yeah, I, I think you can make an argument then. But I heard this brand talk about how you know they took Alabama over Ohio State because of brand, and it's like <laughs> it doesn't get much bigger than Ohio State. It doesn't get much bigger than Alabama right now either. But you're not knocking Ohio State based on brand. I, I don't think <laughs> that's the case whatsoever. Um, I, I just think honestly, it came down to tradition, and you saw Ohio State lose to Oklahoma early in the year fairly convincingly. And that's like, okay, we know Oklahoma's better than Ohio State right now. And that's in the back of your mind as the season's going on, for sure, if you're a committee member anyway. And so the year goes along. Ohio State takes care of Penn State. They take care of any team that comes in their way. Michigan State looks really good. Oh, wait, Ohio State beats them by 40. And it's like, okay, this team's really gaining traction. And then right after Michigan State, they lose um, to Iowa by 30. And that's when I, as an Ohio State fan, was like, this is done. I mean, there is no two-loss team who has made it to the college football playoffs, to my knowledge anyway, um, to this point. And so, uh, you know, it's a young, you know, four-year college football playoff system that we're in. This is the fourth year. But in general, I mean, you lose twice, you're done. And Auburn had the shot, a real shot. If they would have beaten Georgia, they would have been in with two losses. So it's possible, obviously. Um, And I think if number four – or at the time, number five, wasn't Alabama. And if it was a TCU, um, and they're sitting there with the 62nd, 63rd, 64th, whatever, ranked schedule, 
going against Ohio State, who just beat an unbeaten Wisconsin team, kind of took care of them. Not really because of the final score of the fourth quarter, but throughout that game, Troy, like you said, Ohio State was pretty much in control. And JT Barrett would turn the ball over here and there. And so it made the game more interesting. But yeah, I thought Ohio State was not obviously the better team, but they showed they were the better team that day anyway. Um, we talked throughout the year about we, how we thought Ohio State was the better team in general. Even though you're a Wisconsin guy, I'm an Ohio State guy, I'm not one to say, oh, my team's better than your team because, you know, whatever. That's just what I thought from when I saw the two teams play. I thought when I saw Ohio State play this year, at times they looked like they were the best team in the country, no question about it, honestly. And then at times, obviously, you had games against Iowa where they lost by 30. And if, even if they lost to Iowa by 14, by 10, beating Wisconsin the way they did, kind of struggling, um, like I said, they were somewhat in control throughout, but Barrett kind of kept them in it with turnovers and short field for Wisconsin. And it's like, when is Ohio State going to put this game away? And they never really did. And so it's like, yeah, Ohio State's better than Wisconsin, but Wisconsin outscored them in the second half. You could even make that argument. (laughs) So, you know, Ohio State got by Wisconsin. That was kind of the feeling, at least how I saw it. Um, If Barrett doesn't throw a couple picks and you turn those into touchdown drives and Wisconsin's down 20 and Hornybrook's having to throw it massively in the third quarter, that game could have got, you know, to a 24, 28 point differential. And I think at that point, Ohio State would have gotten in. I, I don't think the gap here for the committee between Alabama and Ohio State was that much. But when you talk about teams like Georgia and Auburn and Alabama, the, those are three really good football teams for sure. But Ohio State kind of struggling and never putting away Wisconsin, I think that really killed them. But obviously losing to Iowa by 30, <laughs> that was the dagger to me way back then. Um, and so, obviously, if you don't have that loss, Ohio State's, you know, right up there with the rest of them. Um, I think if Ohio State doesn't lose that game, you're seeing Alabama at number five. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. But in general, I mean, I, I was not surprised when I saw Bama at four, Ohio State five. I knew it would come down to that scenario, most likely, as long as teams ahead of them took care of business, a.k.a. Oklahoma. Because, again, you were automatically getting the ACC and SEC winner in there no matter what. But Oklahoma beats TCU, one spot left. I figured it would be Alabama unless Ohio State really took care of Wisconsin, and they just didn't. I, I, I think Barrett kind of killed it for Ohio State in the sense that he left Wisconsin in the game for a while because of his turnovers. Um, we'll, we can break that game down more, like you said, Troy, on a sole Big Ten show, um, talking about everything and you know Big Ten bowl teams and stuff like that. But in general – Uh, because we do a number of shows together. But in general, once Ohio State beat Wisconsin the way they did, I figured Ohio State was probably screwed. (laughs) They were probably not going to get in it, Um, and they shouldn't, honestly. Uh, Again, I'm an Ohio State fan. (laughs) I like their football team, but you lose to Iowa by 30, you lose two games. Alabama's only loss is to a legitimate Auburn team. Uh, I I fully understand Bama getting in, and – A point I made earlier, too, is that Alabama's the favorite to win the whole thing, and they're the four seed. (laughs) They could have been left out, and people would have said, why are you leaving Vegas' number one team out of the college football playoff because they lost one game? They're the favorite to beat anyone right now. So, So, like you said, Troy. I'm going to jump in here because we we did it. I'll share this. We did an audition tape. Kevin and I are trying to expand our horizons we're actually trying to go full time on, you know, ESPN radio or something along that nature. You brought it up that point. You mentioned Auburn, three loss team. I could argue that they're one of the best four teams in the country, Kevin. Absolutely. I, I think this year you look at it, Ohio State, some could argue is one of the best four teams in the country. Yeah, they had a loss. That that's the thing about college football. A lot of it is where are your losses and when do they come? Alabama's loss, you never apologize for winning. You never apologize for your schedule, right? Your, your conference schedule is set up the way it is. Non-conference, yeah. you have some control. But I'll even say this. Some people say, well, look who they played. I want to say this. This schedule, 2017 schedule, Kevin, was probably made in like 2012. 
It, it was probably done four or five years ago. Well, and in Troy, they also they oh, also right. played Florida State. <laughs> they were supposed to be a national title contender. So it's not like they yeah. on purposely scheduled poorly. Florida State just played like crap because of a number of different reasons throughout the season. That could have easily yeah. been a top five football game. Yeah, and you know, they're that's what I, I people keep saying. And I brought it up about the schedule, the strength of schedule. But you're not going to – you don't blame Alabama right now. It's not like last year they're like, okay, well, how do we set ourselves up to go undefeated? Yeah, right. They're making schedules in 2017 for 2022. I mean, that's yeah. the way that the world works. And so I, I just wanted to throw that out there because you, you've never had a two-loss team in the playoff, and I didn't think it was going to happen either. I think, though – like I said, I text you after uh, the loss of Alabama. I even said, well, we're going to see how bad the committee wants Alabama in the playoffs, you know, because we're going to see where they fall. I I think they truly did want them in there. And again, Kevin, you mentioned, I don't know if there's a bias and a plan and a conspiracy, but I think in the back of everybody's mind, one loss Alabama, they wanted to have them in the playoffs. So I, I just wanted to throw that out there, Kevin, that I think, you know, they're taking four teams, but I think there's teams left out no matter how you went to have a debate because I do believe Ohio State's one of the top four teams uh, out there or a playoff-worthy team anyway. So is Auburn. Auburn is too, even with three losses. I think Auburn can play with anybody, and that's the way I look at it, Kevin. Which teams in the country can play with anybody on any given day? And guess what? Badger fans out there, if you're listening in, it's not the Badgers. They hung around with Ohio State, but they're not in that same class, even at 12-1. and one. They're not there. So I wanted to throw that out there, youngster. Continue. Yeah, uh, that I mean, what you went over was a lot of what I was going to talk about in general. I was basically coming to the end of my point. Um, so for me, I mean, I've got no issues with what took place. It, if Ohio State wanted to get into this playoff, they could have buried Wisconsin. They didn't. Yeah, they could have not lost to Iowa by 30 points. They did. And they could have beaten Oklahoma or made it a really close game, and they didn't. So Ohio State had their opportunities. Um, Wisconsin, I, I think Ohio State's better than Oklahoma right now, Kevin. I, I do. Because yeah. Oklahoma's defense, again, we've mentioned this. Hey, some things, it's funny because i got to be in my head, and I'm like, oh, did I already say this on the show? No, we've already talked about it on a different show. <laughs> Oklahoma's defense is terrible. I think Ohio State, if you have a rematch, they beat them right yeah. now in December. And I know, again, it was the first loss. So, yeah, the way the committee's worked all year is, is, is if a team beats you, you're not going to be ahead of them. And I understand that. But when I look at the teams right now and I look at an Oklahoma team, an Ohio State team, even with the flaws of Barrett, youngster, I think they could do some damage against Oklahoma. Look what they did to the Badger defense. And to me, I think the Badger defense is great, even though people, again, will argue they didn't play anybody. You have to look at how they played those lesser teams. They didn't let those lesser teams hang around that much. I I mentioned Purdue when we were doing a preview that they let them in the red zone. They bent, they bent, they bent. But when they got in the red zone, they buckled down, they took the ball away. That was a great defense and look what Ohio State did to it can you imagine what they do to that Oklahoma defense right now they'd probably put up 50 like a lot of other teams did so I think Ohio State is better than Oklahoma right now that's all I got yeah uh, to me it leads uh, that leads me to I guess uh, this little segue of topic um, roughly 20 minutes into the show uh, yeah, you can make the case Ohio State's better than Oklahoma today. And you can make the case that Oklahoma can take care of Georgia um, in their semifinal game because of how explosive that offense is. And if Oklahoma wins that game 45-41, that wouldn't shock me. I don't expect that to happen. I expect Georgia's defense to play um, a good football game. But <laughs> like I've said before, 
many times that Alabama's defense the last two years, pretty damn good defenses. And yet when they play Clemson the last two years, uh, they've shredded that defense. <laughs> so you can have a great college football defense, but when you're going up against an Ohio State athletic offense, even with the flaws of Barrett, they can put up 27 points with a few turnovers against Wisconsin. And Oklahoma can go up against a great TCU defense and put up 40. And Clemson against Alabama the last couple of years can put up 38, 41 points. Hey, you know, you don't need unbelievable superstars at quarterback. I, I think Baker Mayfield's a great college quarterback. Um, Kelly Bryan at Clemson is a first-year player. Um, he's not this dynamite, unbelievable player, but Clemson can, I mean, they showed it a week ago against Miami. Um, they beat Miami, what was it, uh, 38-7, 38-3. <laughs> Miami's got a very solid defense. They beat them by 35 points. So Clemson's a legitimate football team. I think Oklahoma's a legitimate football team because of their offense. I think Georgia's a legitimate football team because they're a well-rounded team. I think Bama is because they're well-rounded. I think Ohio State is inconsistent, but again, at times, they absolutely look like the best team in the country to me, at times. So, and we talked about Auburn with three losses, but they can compete with anybody, no question about it. Um, This is a year where I think it's pretty wide open in terms of who the best team is. I really don't think there's this juggernaut team out there. If Auburn would have beat Georgia, I, I think I would have favored them because they're a well-rounded football team. But at the same time, so is Georgia. That's why they beat them by 21 points. Um, I, I think any of these games going forward can go any which way because I don't think there is that unbelievable superior team. You've got really good football teams in Clemson, Oklahoma, Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State at times, Auburn obviously at times, and at times not. Um, But uh, Penn State, even today, I think Penn State could hang with anybody. Um, I don't think Wisconsin is getting blown out by anybody, um, depending on how the game goes. But just in general, I I think Clemson's really good. I think Oklahoma's really good. I think Georgia's really good. I think Bama's really good. And maybe that's a safe thing to say. Um, that usually I'll have my, you know, winner picked out, um, even right now. I mean, you could sway me to take any of these four teams. <laughs> and I don't think I could have said that about any college football playoff um, before. And again, this is only the fourth year of it. But, you, you know, year one, um, you can look at teams. And uh, I guess year one, you could assume that Bama would beat Ohio State. Um but they didn't. In Oregon, Florida State, you had guys like Mariota and Winston. And just in general, usually you can pick out a team that's like, okay, this team's maybe a little worse than the other teams. Um, a year ago, Washington was in it, um, and they played Alabama, and they just couldn't move the ball. Um, Washington's a good football team a year ago, but they weren't of the level of Alabama and Clemson a year ago. And even Ohio State got blown out 31 <laughs> nothing by Clemson a year ago. Two years ago, Michigan State got blown out 38 nothing to Alabama. Usually there's somewhat of a blowout. Oregon, the first year of this thing, beat Florida State in the semis by 39 points. Um, and that was against Jameis Winston. Uh, that's against a really good Florida State defense. Oregon still puts up 49 points. I'm going to list just really quickly because they're in front of me the points of just the semifinal games, just to give a, a, a point about college football defenses. Again, Oregon wins 59-20 to 20 over Florida State year one. Ohio State beat Bama 42-35. to 35. Next year, Clemson beats Oklahoma 37-17. In that other semifinal, Bama beats Michigan State 38 nothing. Last year, Clemson beats Ohio State 31 nothing. Alabama beats Washington 24-7. That 24-7 is the lowest margin. Um, I guess, in terms of total points. But still, you can have this great almighty defense like Alabama thought they did against Washington, and then Clemson rips them for 40. So that's that's my thought on college football defenses in general. But this year, I I could take any of these four teams, um, and it really wouldn't shock me as to who takes the whole thing. Yeah, Kevin, I'll tell you, that's, that's why, you know, we've had this discussion many times. Yeah, great defense will get you to the championship. But in college especially, you need to have an offense. You need to have an offense that can score points. You have to be able to get into a shootout. The thing with this is there's now 
two games that you have to win, and there's no beauty points. There's no style points for how you win. Score one more point than the other team and, and move on. Score one more point than the other team and be national champion. Doesn't matter if that score is 21 to 20. Doesn't matter if it's 49 to 48. But when you get to the playoff, there's so many athletic guys out there in college that they're going to eventually, like you said, do better than the defense that's out there. And unless if you protect the football especially, you're going to score points. You're going to put up a ton of points. Can you imagine, Kevin, if Ohio State didn't turn the ball over that many times? Right. Can you imagine? They probably would have put 40 up. And that's against a good defense. Yeah. So, you know, you look at this, these top four. Uh, I bit my tongue. I didn't interrupt. I was going to say, even with my Monopoly money, I'm not betting on anybody right now, Kevin. <laughs> it is. It's, it's wide open. And, and I like it. It makes for a very interesting playoff. People always want to talk about parity in all sports. And I'm not saying there's even parity in college football because when you look at it, we mentioned a handful of teams that we think could compete, and it was maybe a short list of six. So you look at six out of 140, that's not parity. I mean, on any day in college football, the nice thing is you do have young kids that play for pride kids that play with emotion, uh, a.k.a., and I'm going to bring it up and rub salt into the wound, Kevin, Iowa beating Ohio State. Should have never happened. Nine times out of ten, Ohio State wins that game. But on that given day, Iowa played, came out, Ohio State had a bad day, it happens. But I really look at it, you you look at these, these pairings, You know, Oklahoma versus Georgia, you mentioned that you already gave the breakdown kind of quickly about these two teams. You you got offense in Oklahoma, but you got Georgia that's just a well-rounded team, good, solid team. You look at Clemson, Alabama, two good, solid football teams. You're going to have good playoffs, and now that we've said this on this show, that means you're going to have two lopsided semifinal games. You're going to have like 28-point blowouts. But here's the thing. I could even see that, Kevin. Oh, I yeah. could even see one of these teams dominating the other and winning by 28 because all of them have the ability to do that. Yeah. Maybe, well, the only, I'll say this. I have to say it because the glaring weakness of Oklahoma compared to the other three playoff teams is defense. Right. Yeah. Clemson, you know, Clemson, Georgia, Alabama have formidable, good defenses. Oklahoma's defense, not good. Offensively, you look at Alabama, they've struggled at times. Clemson has struggled at times. Oklahoma's probably the most consistent offensive team, but they yeah. had to be because they had to score points because their defense couldn't get off, couldn't stop anyone. So they had to. They were forced to, which I think can actually be a benefit for Oklahoma. They've been in shootout games, and it doesn't phase them. They're like, oh, we've got to go score a touchdown. Let's go score a touchdown. We'll do yeah. that. You brought up a great point. Baker Mayfield, wonderful college quarterback. How it equates to the pro level, you and I are not sold too much on that one. But the kid, when it comes to pure skill, pure talent as a quarterback, he could be the best of the four. Best of the four starting quarterbacks right now. But you're not going to get me started. You're not going to get me worked up on this Mayfield thing because when we talk about his antics, man, I could go for an hour just on that, about things I don't like about him. But it has nothing to do with him being a quarterback. The darn good quarterback and can play the game of college football. So let's we're looking at the time, Kevin. We've got about 30 minutes left in the show. Let's actually start breaking these games down. You got Clemson, Alabama. You got Oklahoma, Georgia. However you want to start, wherever you want to go, I'm turning it back over to you. We can stick with Mr. Mayfield. Uh, <laughs> number two, Oklahoma. Number three, Georgia. 
Uh, both teams 12 and one. Um, again, you're you're not seeing two lost teams in here. Auburn had a very legitimate shot at doing it. Couldn't get it done against Georgia. And the reason is because Georgia's a real football team on both sides of the ball. And coming into this year, I mean, I thought Mr. Eason down there in Georgia was going to be the starting quarterback and he could lead them a very long way. And it's actually been Mr. Fromm, not Mr. Eason, at quarterback. And I thought once Eason got hurt, that and he was only out for a few games, at least to my knowledge, from took over and did really nice things and they stuck with him and he's done really well the entire year. Obviously that's why Georgia's here. Um, this Georgia team and Jake Fromm, I, I think that in general, I mean, it, you've got a freshman quarterback um, in Fromm and he's going fortunately for him against an Oklahoma team who like we've talked about does not have a defense. Um, as of the last 10 games of the year. The first couple games of the year, I, they looked really good <laughs> defensively. Last 10, not so much. Um, but in general, or maybe it was the first three. But regardless, um, Jake from Georgia, you're getting a football team that can throw the ball, that can run the ball. You've got skill position guys. Uh, that's something also that I wanted to bring up very quickly was we talked about offense and how that in college trumps defense. And I don't know if, and we could talk about this for an hour on its own. Um, if, if it's harder to recruit great college defensive players, if it's harder to teach college players defense um, because of how college football is and how spread out it is um, and the talent mismatches on the outside, I, I don't know if you take – obviously, I mean, we've seen it. We've seen Alabama's quote-unquote elite defenses the last couple of years in the title game who have proven to be great defenses in the semis <laughs> just get thrashed by Clemson and their elite athletes. I don't know what it is in college because in the pros, it's not like that. If you've got an unbelievably great pass rush with elite corners like the Broncos did, like the Seahawks have in the past, you can win Super Bowls. Absolutely. No question about it. You can dominate Super Bowls with great defensive lines. It's just different in the NFL. I don't know what it is because Ohio State (laughs) arguably has the best college defensive line I've ever seen in my life. I'm only 26 years old, but that defensive line's got like Yeah, Mr. Hornibrook found out about that defensive line, didn't he? (laughs) He found out a couple of times while he's laying on his buttocks. Yeah. They got to him over and over and over. They really did. And that is against a above average Wisconsin line. You're going to have NFL oh, yeah. players from that Wisconsin line. You always yeah. do. They were getting manhandled by that Ohio State front. The thing is, and I throw the Wisconsin thing out. People know I'm from Wisconsin, but I think this is to your point, Kevin. You take a quarterback. I'm going to, I'll say this. Give me Barrett on Wisconsin, Kevin. Wisconsin wins that game. Because yeah. he can elude the rush. I think right. what you see in college, to your point, I, I'll throw a name out that many people will, will know. Johnny Manziel. Not anything in the pros. Very good college quarterback. Because what happens when the pressure comes in college, Kevin, the quarterbacks can escape and run around because they're athletic enough to do that. There, yeah. there may be... They're taught to do that. In Manziel's case, such a strong arm, great receivers, he could, all he had to do is buy three seconds of time to run around and just heave a ball. Like he didn't even need an open guy. Just and heave he could the heave ball. It, and he could heave it to Mike Evans. <laughs> That's yeah. who he was throwing it to. <laughs> exactly. And Mike Evans would jump up and catch the ball. That's why I think when you look at offenses in college, I don't think it has anything to do with the athletic ability of the defenses, but I just think that you have guys that are more athletic at quarterback than the NFL. And I'm not taking anything away from quarterbacks in the NFL, but in the NFL, it's about timing. It's about windows. The defenses are a lot more complex. There's schemes. They disguise things in college. 
it's one of those things where it's backyard football if you get pressure on the quarterback. And in the NFL, you always hear the receivers are coming back to the ball. They practice this on a scramble drill. Well, in college, they, they just do that all the time anyway. They run their route, and then nine times out of ten, they don't have to break the route off because the quarterback will be able to get them the ball and the receivers are just as athletic, if not more athletic, than the cornerbacks. But the receiver knows where they're going, and the quarterback just winging a prayer. And the good ones, the prayers are answered. The bad ones, now nah, it goes to the defense. So I got off a little bit on that, but I wanted to throw that point out there. No, yeah, and I, I brought us to that point. That's why I said, I mean, we could take that for, I said an hour, we could take that for a three-hour, four-hour show, honestly, just the difference because it's very interesting to me. I, people interest me, and the way people work interests me, and it equates to sports a lot of different times, and that's there are a number of different things in life that draw perfect parallels to sports and how it works. Um, but so that's, that's something that interests me is the difference between college and the pros and how you can be a basically, I mean, it, when I think about starting quarterbacks in the NFL and how they can, uh, beat NFL defenses, none of them are run first guys. I mean, Cam Newton is successful because he is one of the very few freakish six six two fifty quarterbacks out there. And so he makes it work, but he's not going to evade rushers throughout an entire game because of his speed. The only guy literally I think can do that consistently is Mariota, but he doesn't want to do that. He wants to stay in the pocket realistically. I mean, he'll, he'll, I guess he wants to get out on the perimeter, but he knows he can't <laughs> consistently. Um, he can outrun any defensive lineman, and Russell Wilson can outrun. Now, now you've done it, youngster. Now you've made us go way off the way off the tree limb because I got to add this and you know with my <laughs> old age sometimes I forget yeah talk about rolling pockets and quarterbacks in the NFL that are athletic enough to roll out and do that they're looking to roll the pocket because of the pressure and create another pocket outside of the tackle box and yeah. then throw the ball in college when they roll the pocket they're running they're going to run and right. that's another threat in the NFL, yeah, they will run, but when you look at designed rollouts for quarterback runs, who in the world wants to put their franchise quarterback at risk <laughs> to do a yeah. quarterback rollout option? It's just not going to happen. They're paying these guys millions upon millions of dollars, so when they roll the pocket, the, the coach is saying, you better throw the darn ball and don't be running all the time because I need yeah. you under center. 60 times. So that's the big difference. I had to say it, otherwise I would have forgot. It's a good point you brought up, youngster. No, yeah, perfect point by you. Um, yeah, just you can get away with it in college if you're Baker Mayfield, if you're, um, if you're Marcus Mariota in college. Um, you can fly by Florida State's defense, put up 59 points, um, and then in the end you come against Ohio State and it's just – too much for you. Um, it, it's hard to win multiple games at this elite level in the college football playoff. That's why I like it, too, is that you have to win twice. Um, you can't just make a couple spectacular plays and boom, you're the, you're the champion. you, you got to do it twice. Um, so to me, I mean, it's not as though, again, it, this is a single game thing, so you're not always getting the best team necessarily year in, year out, like we said, uh, Auburn could be the best team this year, <laughs> and they're not playing. Um, but it, Georgia beat them by 21 points. I guess to go back to Oklahoma, Georgia, Before I believe... you do that, youngster, now you, you, you brought up another thing on my mind. I, I've heard people now say you got to expand the playoff to eight teams. I don't think you do. I, I think at that point you've diluted it. You and I mentioned before, there's probably six teams we think can play with anybody. If you go to eight teams, you, you may dilute it, and you all of a sudden may get some of those mismatches. I don't want to see that. I want to see good football games if it's a playoff. I like the concept. I really do. But I want to get your quick thought, and I'm looking at the time. We've got to get through Oklahoma game. We've got to get through the Clemson game. But you, really, you sparked something in my brain from hearing these things. 
What are your quick thoughts here on eight teams? I don't think, Kevin, every year you can have eight quality teams in a playoff. I think four is good, and then you're going to have those couple on the bubble. I don't think there, – there may be a blip on the radar where there's eight teams one year that could, but I don't think there's ever going to be eight teams that are just dominant teams that you can say, yeah, they can play with anybody. We mentioned it. There's seven this year. That's close, but it's still not eight. Still not eight. I don't like the idea. I say you stick with four. I hear you. I think what four does is it creates urgency literally every week, and not that you, even to eight teams, not that you, there is no urgency on certain weeks because, again, you basically have to win all your games except one, except with eight teams, you can definitely get away with two because Auburn, with three losses, (laughs) is the seventh best team according to the College Football Playoff Committee. Um, So it depends also how you take those eight, because if you have to take, if the number eight team is the best group of five team, then you're looking at UCF as the number eight team. Um, You're looking at USC as the number seven team, even though they're number eight right now, you'd, you know, potentially have to take the winner from the the power five conferences. Um, That's how I've heard it is that you would take, all five winners of the conferences, which I get. I, I understand that. Do they deserve a shot at winning the national title? I, I, I can't say no. I can't say that USC doesn't deserve a shot. They went 11-2 and two just like Ohio State did. They haven't looked as impressive. That's why they're number eight. But toward the end of the year, if, if you prove that you're the best team in the Pac-12, do you deserve a shot? Yeah, I, I get it. I, I wouldn't say no to that. Are they of the same level as these other teams? I don't necessarily think so. But do they deserve a chance? I, I can't say no to that. But so if you take the top five conference winners and then you have three basically, um, I, I can't think of the word <laughs> off the top of my head, unfortunately, but you would also take the top group of five team, which UCF um, would be in there. They would be the number eight team. But so you'd have two um, – basically open bids. Again, I can't think of the word. I don't know why. Um, two wild cards. There we go. Jeez, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't think of the word, word wild card, Troy. Um, you'd have two extra wild cards in there. and so You've been hanging for, around yeah. with me too much. You're getting forgetful. <laughs> for real. You're just, um, you, you, you talk to me too much. I'm, I'm giving you <laughs> forgetfulness by osmosis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so one wild card team, you don't, you only have two wild card teams realistically, um, because the third would automatically go to that best group of five team, quote unquote. I've heard that. Um, so the two wild cards would be Bama and Wisconsin. Uh, Auburn still wouldn't be in. Um, and again, they could still be the best team in the country. So I think even with eight, at certain years like this year, you could potentially, depending on the guidelines to make up those eight, you could miss out on the best team still. Um, and so you'd still get arguments. You get arguments in the NCAA tournament for who's the 68th best team, let alone the college football playoff for who's the fourth or who's the eighth. You think that would really stop debate? It would be more inclusive, and you'd get all the conference champions, the power fives anyway, and the best group of five team, whoever that is, at the end of the year that the committee believes, which usually it's fairly clear cut. But uh, even the NCAA tournament, there's debate. Um, so if you're looking to end debate <laughs> by Might going as to well, AP, did, You know what, Kevin? You know what we should do? When the AP poll comes out in the preseason, we should just make a big tournament from week one and just have every <laughs> team be in this. And then yeah. you, win, you, you win and you continue to play. If you lose, your season's done. You, you played one <laughs> game, done. No more games. I mean, yeah, I'm <laughs> sarcastic. I'm being very sarcastic because you're absolutely right. You put it at eight, people are going to argue. Then they're going to say, well, it should go to 12 or it should go to 16. It's never going to end. I, no. Like I said, is, is the four, is, is the four teams, is this a perfect playoff situation? No, it's not. But I think it's a good one because you're going to have debate. You're going to have argument. But the one thing you always get normally, Kevin, are two good games. I know there's been some lopsided blowouts, but when you look on paper, you should get good games. And that's my my concern going to eight. You're going to get that one versus eight, 
and it it's not even going to look like a game. Now, that's not to say that it couldn't win, but I just don't think that you're going to give quality one through eight. And so this show has really went off on a whirlwind. <laughs> Let's get back. Let's get back to the Oklahoma-Georgia game. My final thought, Troy, before moving on, and it'll be very quick. I remember a few years ago, I think it was Johnny Manziel's freshman year at Texas A&M, they looked like the best team in the country at the end of the year. I remember talk show hosts talking about this, that, uh, yeah, and it was multiple, that Texas A&M could play with anyone, and they're playing as well as anyone. They had a couple losses. They might have had three um, out of their first, like, seven, eight games of the year, but then toward the end, they were just, like, killing people, and Manziel was figuring out the college game, and they looked unbelievable, and they finished the year like the ninth best team, and so it was proposed at the time that we were going to have this college football playoff. There were going to be four teams, and so even it's like, oh, my God, only four teams. We should make it eight. Well, even in that year, it was like Texas A&M finished ninth, and it was like they could play with anyone <laughs> by the end of the year. Um, so even way back then, I mean, you could, you could tell at the time that the ninth best team could be the best team and how to divide up those eight teams. It's, to me, four. If you lose twice, you're basically done. Uh, unless it's uh, very rare circumstances like this year and Auburn had the shot. But four creates urgency every single freaking week. And when you put it to eight, you can lose twice and almost easily get in if you're an elite team like Auburn, like Alabama, like Ohio State. Even if Clemson lost to Miami in the ACC championship game, you think Clemson falls from one to nine? Of course not. <laughs> They'd be in. So it it creates a lot more urgency to have four and you're always going to have one conference get screwed out this year you get two so it's awesome <laughs> you're getting two conferences saying what the heck why are we not in this thing it, it's great honestly <laughs> yeah you and i kind of like that kevin when there's that controversy and people kind of yeah. get screwed we we like that you know i always said i like rooting for the underdog and i like when i like when things like that happen thanks for good debate yeah finally Oklahoma, Georgia, um, I, I'm going back and forth with this in my head. I think Georgia is the more complete team for sure. Um, but when talking about Baker Mayfield as a senior, because literally we talked a couple hours ago, Troy, and I took Georgia in this game, and I'm almost starting to want to take Oklahoma. <laughs> that's, that's how even I think these four teams are. Because, you're, again, you're taking a freshman quarterback in Georgia who's got a strong defense, a, a strong running game, against this Oklahoma offense that's just been dynamite throughout the year against anybody. Even in the game they lost, they scored 31 points. So I, <laughs> I expect them to score 31-plus. I expect Georgia to score 31-plus. I just almost believe more in Baker Mayfield than I do a freshman, who's played really well all year long, but he's not this unbelievable dynamite, you know, leading Georgia 40-plus points every single week. I, I don't think that's Jake Fromm. I don't think that's Georgia's offense. I believe more in Oklahoma's offense. I, I really do. I think over the last two hours I have switched my pick and I would actually go with <laughs> Oklahoma over Georgia right now. You millennials in changing your picks. <laughs> you, I'll tell you. So you, you're, you're now changed. Now you're picking Oklahoma. Okay. Right now. Yes, right now. And tomorrow it'll be Georgia. And it very well Saturday could be. Saturday it'll be Oklahoma. I'm going to tell you <laughs> why it's going to be Georgia. Yeah. I agree with you. Oklahoma can score, and they may very well they, – they may not score every time they get the ball. But here's how Georgia wins, Kevin. They've got a not, guy named Mr. Chubb, and that's where this mm -hmm. offense is going to lie. And if Georgia can do something that I've said when we've previewed NFL games – actually, I said it with the Packers. I said it with the Badgers. Georgia has to win the time of possession battle. The best defense against that Oklahoma offense, keep them on the sideline. Keep yeah. Mr. Mayfield on the sideline, and Georgia can do that. They have a running attack that can do that. They can grind the ball. They can move the chains. Probably may not have to throw the ball 20 times. You may have to take a page right over Wisconsin's playbook. Because what did I say all year, Kevin? I said... If Mr. Hornybrook has to throw the ball 20 times, they're going to lose. And against Ohio State, career highs in pass attempts. That's why. You put the ball in his hand, that's not going to equate to a win. 
But when you have a guy named Chubb running the ball and you can run and churn and eat up the clock and get first downs, what that will do is keep Oklahoma's offense on the sideline and not give them more possessions. And I think against this Oklahoma defense, Chubb can run and run. Fromm can make a play here and there. They can have those long 10-play, 70-yard drives that end in points. Georgia can finish. They can finish off drives. And against a defense, in my mind, that's porous, it's not going to be field goals. I think I text you in the championship game. Can't win kicking field goals when Wisconsin had to kick a field goal. Can't win kicking field goals. Georgia can score touchdowns. Georgia can put the exclamation point on drives, Kevin. And against this Oklahoma defense, I think they can do it. That's why I think they win. I think they control the clock. They win the first down battle. They're going to have to win the turnover battle. They can't turn it over. But if they do that, they will beat Oklahoma. But vice versa, Oklahoma's going to get the ball, and they're going to go down and score, even against a good Georgia defense. But I think what's going to happen is their possessions are going to be limited, and they're going to have that one possession or two possessions where they have to punt or they miss a field goal or there's an interception or a fumble, and I think Georgia wins. So we've got about eight minutes left to go over the next game. You can give a quick thought on that, but we really got to get to Alabama-Clemson, and we got about eight minutes to do it, youngster. Yeah, and it's not even Nick Chubb, too. Sonny Michelle, that backfield of Chubb and Michelle is <laughs> probably the best backfield in college football. And so, yeah, how do you beat Oklahoma? You take care of the ball. You run it down their throat, drive after drive after drive after drive. You force Oklahoma to have to score touchdowns, not field goals. Um, and also, by eating up clock and pounding Oklahoma's defense on the ground, your defense stays healthy, they stay fresh, they can pin their ears back and just blitz after Mayfield and make life insane for them. So, yeah, Georgia's got the perfect recipe to do it. <laughs> just over the course of you talking, Troy, may have flipped my mind again because Georgia's got the perfect recipe to beat Oklahoma. Oh, my God, youngster. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, Troy, that it's, it's perfect <laughs> for Georgia. But, again, I, do I go against Mayfield and for a freshman starting quarterback? I, it's hard just, to go against him. It really is. But I'm glad – I'm glad I could have changed your mind because I'm really I'm, – I'm, I'm set on Georgia winning the game because of yeah. what you said. They do. They, they have the perfect way to beat them if they can execute that. But it's a big right. if. They, they have to sustain these drives. They can't turn the ball over. They can't fumble. They can't throw interceptions. But, yes, you're right. You validated what I said because that's what I believe. They can have these 10-play drives that eat up seven, eight minutes and keep that offense on the sideline. They have it. Can they execute it? That's the key. That's the key. But I'm glad I can influence you a little bit, youngster. (laughs) Yeah. Again, well, 10 minutes, five minutes, and my mind almost changed again. Um, I really do, as a fan, want Georgia to just win this game 45 nothing. I would love nothing more than to see late Baker Mayfield just laying on his back and just see Georgia just pound them into the ground. There's nothing more I would want than that. I just want to see Oklahoma get obliterated. And it's not at all because of what Oklahoma did to Ohio State earlier in the year. It's just Baker Mayfield. I'm just not a fan, honestly. That's, that, that's just me. I want Georgia to pummel them. I just don't know in the world of college football if I can comfortably take Georgia over Oklahoma. With Clemson, Alabama, though. Um, Clemson also yes, has a first-year Sorry to all you Clemson, Alabama fans that we're going to cut your <laughs> short. we got five minutes. But I'm going to tell you what. Not, I'm not going to interrupt the youngster. Youngster's not going to interrupt me. We're going to go through this quickly, fast, zoom, zoom, and give you our quick thoughts on this game. Yeah. So Clemson also has a first-year starter, Kelly Bryant, although he's 21 years old. He's not 19. Um, He's been sitting behind Deshaun Watson. So you've got a guy who's been there before in terms of being on the bench. And at least he (laughs) has seen um, the college football playoff. 
take place in front of his eyes. I, I don't think you're seeing him go into this huge stage and it's his first year being a starter and he's going to be overwhelmed necessarily by Bama's defense. I don't necessarily think that's going to be the case because I think he has wheels to run. And with that in college, that's dangerous. That's always been dangerous for any defense. Nick Saban's defenses have kind of been, I guess, uh, the the talk of the town with running quarterbacks and how difficult it is for Nick Saban to stop them. It's not Nick Saban. It's every college defense. Every college defense has problems with Russell Wilson in college, with Johnny Manziel in college, with Colin Kaepernick in college, with uh, whoever, Baker Mayfield in college, uh, with Terrell Pryor in college. I mean, it, it's just different. Vince Young in college. And how many of those guys make it in the NFL? Russell Wilson. That, that's it. <laughs> because he can throw from the pocket. Um, but just in general, I mean, running quarterbacks give defenses in college a hard time. Not just Nick Saban, but college defenses in general. Kelly Bryant can do that. He can also beat you with his arm. He, he's a legitimate quarterback. I, I think he's better than Jake Fromm at Georgia. I, I think Clemson wins this game because Alabama's defense is depleted at the linebacker spot. And so I think Clemson can move the ball up and down the field. I don't think this offense is as good as it was with Watson the last couple of years. But at the same time, they can still win the game 31-28. They can win the game 34-31 that technically wouldn't be putting up 500, 600 yards of total offense, 38, 41 points like Watson did against Alabama the last couple of years. But it can be good enough and score 31 and win this game because Clemson's got a real defense. And I don't think Alabama's got this unbelievable electrifying offense. Like you said, at times, Troy, this Clemson tight offense, not necessarily dynamic, not necessarily um, the best offense in college football. I think they're really good. But I, I, I think both these offenses are really good, and I think I just give the edge to Clemson's defense, honestly, over Alabama's, um, which is weird to say. But that's the way I feel right now. Um, that one I feel not confident in because, again, Vegas thinks Bama's the best team in the country. Um, not to say that Vegas is always right, but there's a reason. Uh, Bama's really good. All four of these teams are really good in their own specific way. Um, I just think Clemson's defense has an easier time than Alabama's defense does, and in large part, it's honestly because of health. That's <laughs> that's my thought. I guess right now, this second, I see Oklahoma Clemson playing um, in the title game. But <laughs> again, as this show has has shown, I, I think all four of these teams could be in the college football um, championship, and all four could win the whole thing. Yeah, well, we said that. I wasn't going to use my Monopoly money to put any money down on any one of these teams. But I think in this game, uh, I can keep it short because you already took everything I was going to say. I think Clemson defensively will have the edge. I think Clemson can do some things to Alabama basically because of what I've seen from Alabama when I watch them play with the inconsistency at times having a hard time on third down, not being able to move the ball. I think Clemson's offense is better. Uh, defenses, uh, you mentioned health. I'll even go as far as saying it's a wash. You give, give both the defenses a nice big gold star, right? Then you've got to look at offensively, who's going to have the edge? And I look at it, I'm not going to go a quarterback play here. You know, that could be a wash in itself. But overall, offense efficiency, and I guess that comes down to quarterback play when you're talking about it. But offensive efficiency, I lean the needle towards Clemson. I am, so I'm solid on Clemson, not changing my mind here, not like you millennials, not doing it. (laughs) Clemson, Clemson versus Georgia. That is my championship game. So when I look at it, youngster, the music is going to get ready to start here shortly. Like I said, this show was on a whirlwind. We went all over the place. We, we yeah. were like one of those pictograms <laughs> where we just kept drawing circles over and over and over and over and just kept talking about stuff. And I want to keep talking about stuff. But I know. The music has started. Hope you enjoyed the show, everyone. We'll talk with you soon. Have a great weekend.
Thank you for listening to Talking Sports with the Youngster and the Old Man. Please come back again next time as Troy and Kevin share the latest news in the world of sports.